Is it just me or did Guitar Hero ruin learning instruments for an entire generation of youth? I'm gonna break that down right now with Rudy Ayub. Let's go. In order to figure this out, we need to dive into three questions. Number one, what good did Guitar Hero bring? Number two, exactly how did it ruin or change the way that a music fan perceives learning an instrument? And three, is a game like Guitar Hero useless and wasted potential that could be put into a real instrument? Is mayonnaise an instrument? Before we go into the questions, make sure to subscribe to the channel, turn on the bell, and like this video as I release a music culture breakdown video every Thursday. Also, I need the external validation. Part one, it did a good brought fun to me and my friend and back then we were starting to learn guitar it kind of brought that vibe of oh look at this like this is a rocker vibe like this is a whole ass universe by itself and it's cool guitar hero did a lot of the same for myself as well i can attribute guitar hero as the gateway drug to a lot of rock bands that i didn't know and it was probably one of the last massive surges of rock popularity in the music industry but more than discovery it also had a massive impact on money being put back into rock music as brown university's Kerry miller conducted a study and found that 76 percent of people who bought guitar hero bought some of the music that they played in the game. So before ripping into the negative side, I have to give respect to the modernization of rock music in a way that got kids excited to listen to it again. So Guitar Hero, thank you for that. Part two, it did a bad. And here's my main beef. Much like things that are created to have a mass appeal, a video game must work like a video game with constant events created to release dopamine in your brain and keep you wanting to play more. It's the premise of most technology. They want you to feel pleasure while engaging with it, so you keep engaging with it. And that is the exact opposite of the process of learning an instrument. There is pleasure in the journey, but it's much more methodical and slow paced scale. The technical word for it is delayed gratification, where you put off something fun or pleasurable now in order to gain something even more fun and enjoyable later. This applies to everything from studying for a test to practicing basketball drills for hours or learning any hobby or craft. And then you end up with this classic situation. I mean, even now, when I tell someone I play guitar, they would be like, oh, I played Guitar Hero when I was like 13. Okay, how is that relevant? And then they're like, oh, but and then I wanted to learn guitar after this. I was like, oh, cool. Like, did you learn guitar? He's like, no, I stopped after two weeks. And I'm like, oh, well, that's sad. You should have stuck with it. And they're like, yeah, it just wasn't for me. But the game is fun. That. That is the problem. It's misrepresenting the journey of learning the craft of music. And once somebody picks up a real guitar and tries to learn it, they aren't really feeling any dopamine releases, they aren't winning something every four minutes, and they aren't getting better at lightning speeds. So why would you bother trying to learn this thing that is the essence of long delayed gratification when you can just have a ton of fun while feeling like you're doing the same thing? I think if people like have, they have other hobbies and they know how long it takes, then it's not gonna be an instant thing then it's fine. But if someone that is not really familiar with like picking up a hobby and like practicing, they won't know that it takes like 10,000 hours to be good at something. And maybe like a couple weeks you play it and you can get everything on expert and then you think you're good at the game, which, which you are, but you're not good at the game of music. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and in a way it breaks my heart because I've seen and do see that same story play out all the time and I wish people could understand how rewarding and fulfilling the grueling process of refining a craft is. But I get why people opted out so quickly. Part 3. Is this game useless wasted potential? So many old people say this about the video game industry as a whole, but this was especially the case for Guitar Hero because people like me and millions of others put countless, countless hours into this plastic button controller that would fade with time instead of putting that same time into something more creative and well-respected like real guitar playing. To them, it's time wasted and kids just don't appreciate the good times and being young and healthy and blah, blah, blah. Son, you need to stop playing that Guitar Hero. It's not helping you with anything in life. Think how good you could be at actual guitar if you try. Oh, it's about wasted potential and all the time I'm not spending on, you know, something useful and productive? Yes, of course, I want the best for you. What about the eight to 10 hours you spend a week watching a sport while you're sitting on the couch and doing nothing? Oh, instead of, you're doing that instead of playing the sport yourself, getting exercise and learning a new skill? Ever thought of that? Maybe you, uh, stop judging me so much for how I spend my free time compared to how you do? Whatever you do, it doesn't matter. 
as long as you're happy. I spend a lot of time playing games. Not a lot of time, but I, I play a couple of games a day and they take me about an hour, two hours, every day almost. And I'm like, okay, if I practice like, I don't know, sight reading or like soloing, I'll be better. But like, so what? These games make me happier and then I can, they inspire me. Rudy's sentiment is a big piece of why I'm so against the video games are useless sentiment. Especially in something like video games compared to sports, you're always experiencing something new that can inspire you in a different way. And especially in a game like Guitar Hero, where the inspiration is from dozens of legendary bands and artists that are introducing you to new things that you haven't heard. So no, it's 100% not a waste, no matter what your aunt might have used to say to you at Thanksgiving. And ultimately, your free time and what you do with it is up to you, and it would be very unrealistic to think that every moment of your day is gonna go towards building some macro important high level skill craft or practice. So do you think Guitar Hero's gamification of music contributed to more people losing interest in real instruments? I would love to know in the comments down below. And in the end, yes, it has in a way ruined the art of learning and practicing for a lot of people, but it by no means is any kind of a waste. And to go even bigger picture than the game itself, I can't ignore how little the guitar is even used in charting music these days. Beyond a couple outliers or loops, it's pretty much non-existent. So that decline of popularity and the celebrities the youth follow is going to have an impact on what people are learning as well. As much of a decline that learning guitar has had in the mainstream, the inverse can be said about learning music production on laptops and YouTube, which has exploded in the last 10 years. So people's ability to delay gratification is there, but the desire could be shifting into a different medium. Thank you so much for taking a minute to check out this video. And if you really enjoyed this, I already know that you're subscribed here, but more than that, I wanna make sure that you check out this next video here because it's another music culture breakdown that I think you're really, really gonna love, especially if you're into this whole discussion about Guitar Hero, the gamification of music, and how it's changed the way that we perceive learning an instrument. Enjoy that video. See you there.